Hi. Hello, Olivia. Been a while. Since way before my police investigation. And before my arrest. Two big mistakes. You think? I never believed that you were the stalker. It's funny I missed that message. <laughs> That's because I was so busy, consumed with my own messed up life, I didn't have time to think about anything else. I'm sorry. <laughs> By the way, that messed up life, it does not include stalking Riva. I didn't think so. For what it's worth, I didn't think you were any guiltier than I was. Not. <laughs> I gotta get going. I'm going okay. for Cedars to check up on the Coopers. I know, I heard about that. That's, that's awful. Philip yeah. is over there right now. Yeah. Holly, wait before you go. Oh. Something else on your well, mind? You know what your business reporter is up to, don't you? Yeah, well, I'm kind of a hands-on editor. You are. That story you're running about Alan, mm -hmm. you have to kill it. Oh, please, don't run this. It'll just humiliate Alan for no good reason. Not to mention the damage to your stock oh, options. It's, it's nothing your readers would be interested in. It's tabloid fodder. What, are you insulting my paper no, now? No, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying that the legitimate concerns of the investors will be answered very soon, I promise. I promise, 24 hours. Sit on the story for a day. That's all I'm asking. 24 hours, and that's it. Uh, fine, thank you. Ms. Bowling has volunteered to intercede with the district attorney on your behalf. Yeah, apparently she found some evidence that proves that it was Alan who was stalking Reva, not me. And she's willing to go to Doris Wolf with it. What evidence? She didn't say, but I believe her, Ross. Olivia, how can you say that? You were part of the Spaulding family long enough to know how they operate. They always protect their own. But that's what she thinks she's doing by coming forward, protecting her family and her company. By going out of her way to send her brother right, to prison? I'm sure it's more complicated than it, it sounds, but I'm sure she has her reasons, too. Yeah, I'm sure she does, and I can tell you what they are. Now, Alex and Doris want us to tip our hand at this meeting, and that will give them enough ammunition to sink us when it comes to trial no i don't believe that i believe that if we follow her suggestion there won't be a trial well then you must know something i don't all right yes there is something that alexander wants very much and she thinks that i'm the only person who can help her with it and what is it i can't say but her going to the DA is conditional on me doing this thing for her. Maybe that's what she wants you to believe. I mean, what if this is a setup and we get into this meeting with Alex and Doris and we show our hand, which we'll be obliged to do, and then Alexandra suddenly forgets this so-called evidence Wait of a minute, hers. Wait a minute, back up. What do you mean we will be obliged to show our hand? Well, the district attorney will want full disclosure from both sides. And if we get into that and Alex doesn't cooperate, we're at a disadvantage. No, not necessarily. We have evidence that implicates Alan. We do? Why don't you tell me what it the is? The phony cell phone that Philip and I found in his briefcase? Philip, who has renounced his father and is now shacking up with you, I don't think that we want to go there. And how do you know that that cell phone actually belongs to Alan? I mean, do you have any proof? Do you have a receipt, a statement from a salesperson? No, any? but it was programmed exactly like my phone. Whoever received a call from that phone would think it was coming from me. And the auto dial was activated by Alan's voice, not mine. So he had to have been the one who programmed it. Prove it. I can't, but it's a logical assumption. Yeah, it is. I can give you another logical assumption, though. You bought that phone, and you had it programmed, and then you had it planted in Alan's briefcase to get yourself uh, off the hook. You know what? That's absurd. It is no more absurd than what we will be claiming Alan did. Now, Olivia, I know you don't want to hear this, but if it goes to trial, you're going to hear it in court, and it's my job to prepare you. All right. What do you think we should do? I think that we should agree to have this meeting with the district attorney on one condition. Alex has to share this evidence with us prior to the meeting, and we have to have a way to verify it. She can't do that. No dice. Well, we'll sit for our little powwow with Doris. Is this something wrong? Uh, I don't think so. Olivia just told me of your offer, and we respectfully reject it. 
Oh, well, may I ask why? Well, you claim that you have evidence that exonerates Olivia and implicates Alan. Oh, Ross, please, there is evidence. I mean, you know, just Alan's behavior in the last few days is, is enough. I mean, multiple people have witnessed that. Well, that in and of itself, that proves nothing. Alex, we've known each other a long, long time. Let's not do this. Now, don't stall. Just tell us what you have. <sighs> sorry. I'm sorry. I have to take this. That's okay. Right back. Ross Marlin. I thought we had a deal, Olivia. That I clear you and you convince Philip to run Spalding Enterprises. I want to honor that deal, Alexander, but Ross is right. All I have is your word that you won't blindside me when we get into the DA's office, and that isn't good enough for me. Well, you know, I didn't really think it would be, which is exactly why I've invited someone else to join us. <laughs> Leonard Whiting. Uh, Olivia Ross. Young Mr. Whiting here has some very interesting stories to tell Doris, and I... Uh, don't you, dear? <laughs> can see that is not Olivia's phone it is a copy it is an electronic duplicate program so that whatever call comes from the phone can be traced right back to Olivia fascinating but it still doesn't prove anything even if Alan Spaulding's voice is the only voice that can activate that phone he had to speak into and program it himself well not necessarily someone could have taped Alan's voice and then made a duplicate in order to frame him why are you party to this Alexandra well, Doris, because I'm afraid what they're telling you might be true, that Alan did do these terrible things. But only because he was, he's been under enormous pressure. Well, you think this is going to get him off the hook, and you're willing to help Olivia because she's pregnant with his child. Or uh, some Spalding child. It's a small town. Word gets around. Doris, come on. I'm sorry. I don't buy any of this. Well, in a moment, you'll have no choice. Who is this? Why don't you tell Ms. Wolf your name? Uh, my name is Leonard Whiting. I work at Spalding Enterprises in IT. And Leonard, you have no reason to think you were doing anything wrong. <laughs> and I'm sure Miss Wolf will understand once you explain things to her. I, uh, uh, Mr. Spalding, Alan Spalding, came to me one day after work and asked me to create a cell phone that was an exact electronic duplicate of his wife's cell phone. Uh, he said it was for some practical joke he wanted to play on her. So I said, sure, okay, well, he's the boss. Uh, I set up the phone for him, and we programmed the auto dial to respond to his voice. Um, then, uh, um, Go on, Mr. Wood. Okay, then uh, once I'd done that, uh, Mr. Spalding said he had another job for me. He wants me to get him a device that will distort his voice when he talks, so no one will recognize it. Uh, we did a couple of trial runs with the gizmo and taped them to make sure it sounded okay. I have the tape with me. Very good. Why don't you play this tape for the district attorney? Okay. Um, I had no idea how Mr. Spalding was going to use this. Then it's all right. Okay. Uh, it's queued up. Uh, this is what Mr. Spalding actually said. I'm watching you. This is how it sounded after we routed it through the filter. I'm watching you, Eva. All right. Now I'm here. Where's Alan? Doris, you and I had an agreement in your office that you'd go... Well, you'd be lenient with my brother. And I will be. If he is truly as sick as you say he is. Yeah. But... We all know Alan Spaulding is notorious for his shenanigans. Faking mental illness is a classic way to beat a rap. Did I hear someone call my name? Well, Olivia. Doris, Ross, don't tell me you've changed your plea to guilty. Alan. It's about time you realized the jig was up. Mr. Spaulding, I've heard a rumor that you haven't been feeling well lately. Me? Hogwash. I had a heart attack a few months ago, but I feel fit as a fiddle. So I see. Nice try, Alexandra. Look, 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 I have a new trial no, to prepare no. for. Ross, your client's off the hook, and your brother needs a lawyer. 